Hello and welcome to the RPG Academy podcast. My name is Michael and I'm here today with guest host Tom. Tom, say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. Uh, everyone at listening, I would assume at this point knows myself and Tom, but maybe not. Maybe this is your first time here because you're coming specifically for the uh, product that we're going to be reviewing today. If this is your first time at the Academy, welcome. Uh, but we are going to be re- reviewing the Symbarum Starter Set from Free League Press. And big thank you to Free League for sending Tom a physical copy of the product and me a digital copy for review purposes. So here at the RPG Academy, we're a big believer in... Uh, if you're having fun, I, mean, I can't, can't talk right. If you're having fun, you're doing it you're right. You're doing it right. It's our it, motto. It is our motto, and that's, that's the way we live and game by. Uh, our review episodes are very much, though, structured as a review. We're going to break down what we like, what we don't like, and offer a suggestion on whether this is a product you should pick up. But we only review things that we at least kind of like. So you're never going to hear a hardcore bad review here because if we... We just won't do those. So the lowest grade possible is a C minus. Which is technically that is passing. And there's many times when I was in college where a C minus, that was golden. You know what they call doctors who got C's in college? What's that? Doctors. Oh, there you go. All right. So with that, let's jump into it. So specifically, Tom, say hi to everyone. Tell them a little bit about yourself. Introduce yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yes, yeah, like Michael said, I am the co-host here on the RPG Academy. You can follow me at Bezcar Tom on Twitter, Mandalorian Metal Tom on Twitter. You can catch me hosting the Ghost of Saltmarsh stream over on our Twitch and then our show and tell episodes on our podcast feed. Excellent. Uh, and it's just you and I today. My name, of course, is Michael. Uh, you can find everything I do at the RPG Academy. Been co-hosting or hosting this show for over nine years at this point. Uh, long-term gamer. Love this stuff. Uh, you can find me again at the RPG Academy. So we have had a few shows in the past about Symbarum or Symbarum. I'm not sure exactly the pronunciation. Symbarum. I say Symbarum. That's what I would say as well. Symbarum. I've heard Symbarum. Symbarum. All oh, right. That okay. makes me think of the Lion King for some reason. Yeah. Uh, but we have what we call a trial, which we did many years ago when the product first came out, which you can listen to, which is us playing the game. Uh, through an actual play. And at the end of that, we do a mini review based on our experiences uh, playing that session. Uh, we also did a deep dive on the Symbarum set as a whole earlier in this series of reviews with a guest, uh, Dave, from the Effect podcast, uh, who has done some work with Free League. And so we did a really deep dive throughout the entire core book and the core rules. Today, we are focused just on this new product, which is the starter set. So, Tom... Yes. In general, what is your thoughts on starter sets? So I am a huge fan of starter sets. I like boxes, all right, because I like the starter sets because they can go on a shelf. They they feel, it feels like I've got something more than just a book. It's like a game, even though, you know, role playing is, it's a game, but this like feels more tactile, something I can grab. Plus, I love starter sets because I'm more inclined to try a system if I have a starter set. If when I buy buy a starter set, I don't feel like I need to do the starter set and then jump into a full campaign. When I get a starter set, my intention is I'm going to buy the starter set. I'm going to run a two to three session game and that's it. And then I'm going to put it on the shelf for now. Uh, And that's honestly what I've done with a lot of my starter sets. So I've got Simbrom. I'm going to be running through that. I've got the Legend of the Five Rings, Star Wars, Paranoia, uh, a bunch of obviously the D&D ones, a bunch of other ones. So I love starter sets. What about yourself, Michael? I also love... So, yes, I absolutely love starter sets. Right now, my gaming consists of either these thick tome books or these little indie games. And if it's a little indie game that's like five pages or maybe even one page, obviously you don't need a starter set because it's kind of its own starter set. But if it's a thick game, then I think starter sets almost are a requirement these days because exactly what you said more than likely I'm not going to switch and this be the game that I run for the rest of my life because I don't think there is a game that's Mm -hmm. going to be that game anymore. But I want to be able to to experience this game as it was meant to be played so I get that true experience of it. And I think that's where starter sets shine is you get a starter set, it gives you enough of the rules to really run a game that's going to fit the feel, the tone, the theme of that game. You experience with yourself, you experience with your players. And then if you are done with it, you get to put it on the shelf and it looks really nice on your shelf with your other games. So hardcore, I'm into starter sets. And then also just because I do run a 
a, a small gaming uh, convention where we allow people to borrow games from our library, it's nice to be able to do that as well and offer like here, this is all you need to go play. It's self-contained. It's easy to you know unpack and pack up. So definitely all the way around, I, I love starter sets. So spoilers for this episode, we're probably going to be pretty positive overall on the Simbarum yeah. uh, starter set. But let's talk about maybe some of the specifics about this particular starter set and maybe what elevates it or maybe doesn't quite live up to those high expectations we have. So let's yes. talk about the box first, just the physical box. Yeah, so what we uh, what I'll do is I'll talk about the box and I'll give a general overview of what comes in the box. Okay. All right, so I did a big unboxing on Twitter you can go check out but once again we've got a real nice quality box like free league puts out like this is thick cardboard if you have played the forbidden lands or tales from the loop or any other other games that have come in a box uh they're nice okay just throwing it out there the alien starter set it's same thing very high quality and then when you open up the box the first thing that is there screaming at you you get some dice okay I'm gonna oh it's kind of hard to see in that plastic bag, but they, they actually have a, a name for them. I'm not sure what they call it, but honestly, they're just green marble dice. Mm. Standard, like they feel like chess X, but I mean, they're they're nice. They feel good. They're pretty. I like the color. If you like marble dice, it's cool to have. Always, if you got a starter set, just throw in some dice. Like they're just, it's fun to get. It's like, oh, dice. <laughs> I have tons of dice. You know, you get another set. You're like, oh, I like that. Yep. And so next you get, we've got some character sheets. All right. We get six pre-made character sheets. All right. This is the, the Simbarum character sheet. Lots of, lots of cool stuff on here. I love this character sheet because of how it has the abilities right up in the front. This is like your, what you use in the game. So they're front and back. Uh, it is a, it is a little bit hard to write on them. So I will say that it's kind of glossy paper. Uh, so yeah, so there's that. I will they're say probably that. not made to write on if I... I yeah, I it. don't know. I was a little confused. I mean, just go with some cheaper paper. Like, Well, so. here's what I do, for, I'll, again, uh, for myself, that I uh, I will often laminate those. Or okay, I'll, or I'll that make, makes I'll sense. I will make copies and laminate them, and then you can use like a dry erase or wet erase marker for those. But I do want to just quickly jump in. That thing about pre-made character sheets, that in a starter set... The pre-made character sheets are generally how the players interact with the rules. Uh, yes. the, usually they're a little bit more involved than your typical character sheet, and it has rules explanations. I know the Star Wars starter sets specifically do that, where you actually have two versions. I think Legends of Five Rings does the same thing, maybe. I know Star Wars does, where you have like a level one version and like a level two, and then like partway through the adventure, it'll say, turn the page, and now here's your upgraded stats. Uh, so looking at it from that standpoint, do you think those character sheets do a good job of given the players access to the rules? Do they explain more or is it just numbers on a page? It's just numbers on the page. So they do have, it's just numbers on the page because this is a little bit different than other starter sets Okay. because it does come with, it comes with two books, all right? And the starter rules here, which is the first book is a player focused book. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's a player focused book, but that said, if a GM were to read this, and then hand the players the starter set, you could easily explain to the players without them needing to read through this what they need to know. Okay. All right, so I will say that. So the player doesn't need to go through this. The GM just does, all okay. right? So the next thing that you get is we get two books. You get, these are 64 page books. We have this first one, which is the, uh, this is the starter rules. And then we get another one, which is uh, the setting and adventures and this is the, the second book is for the gm all right uh it's really thick it's square bound book uh it's really nice it's a good binding there's no there's no uh there's no staples or anything mm. so that are going to come out uh it's it's all it's bound really well uh really nice thick paper so the next thing you get are you get two maps all right, these aren't massive maps, which I'm actually kind of glad for. Great big maps are awesome, but just for me personally, I have so much stuff on the table. I like smaller maps. So these, I don't know what size these are. They're like a little bit bigger than 11 by 17. Okay. So you you get two two sided maps. Uh, the first one has this will hold on it, mm. which I'm showing right now, and then the other one is Davakar. So you get the big forest. Those are and the it's two got, big 
basically locations we covered in our Simbrum yeah. review. Thistlehold is sort of the starter location where you meet up before you go into Davakar. And Davakar is the giant forest that tries to kill you. For sure. And I will say this, which is really cool. The Davakar map has a ton of different locations on it already printed on there. So which is really cool. The next map you get is for the adventures themselves. Okay, this one is for the, it's a two-sided map. You get this really cool tower cutaway, all right? It's really sweet. Uh, I, I really like this a lot. And then the other map is a little goofy, all right? Because <laughs> it is, it's very hard to see. It's very dark. Yeah, Tom's it's, showing it right now for the audio audience, and I can't make heads or tails out of it. It looks like yeah, camouflage. Yeah, even if like the vid my video feed were to be really great, it would still be hard to see. Uh, so as somebody with terrible vision, like it's even it's kind of hard to see here. But what it is, it's a just a forest, a general forest map, uh, and it's cool to have to throw on the the table so players can see. Uh, but also my other nitpick, if I'm going to nitpick anything, because I nitpick this on every single RPG product. All right. So I did it for when Ghost of Saltmarsh came out. I, I screamed so much about this. And I'm going to do it here too. The compass rows that they include in this, it's weird perspective. All right. It's you know, West is pointing up. Okay. <sighs> Don't do this. All right. I understand like you want to like be a little bit different. And it's not even like all the way up. It's kind of like crooked just set your maps with north up like just do it that way oh uh, that's why uh, it's not just it's not just this uh, it's not just simram either there's so many rpg companies who've been doing this lately like oh look this is a different perspective no it confuses people just put it north how it's supposed to be and that's the contents that's the contents of the box you get your little you also obviously uh get your little you get your your ads your free league ads in there too so you get your little ad book from them so that's that's it. That's it. That's what's in the that's what's in the box. All right. So we're going to dive into the components a little bit more and like what what this actually are. But just looking at the box itself, the quality of the box, the quality of the printing, the full color maps, the dice. Do you think just by the base stuff alone is 42 bucks, which is what it's currently listed on their website, roughly 42 and some change. Do you think that's a good price for this product? I do. If you compare it to other RPG products. Obviously, the D and D starter sets are like usually like eleven dollars or twenty bucks on Amazon. You can't beat that price. But if you take into a fact that this current industry standard for an RPG book is forty nine ninety nine, that's kind of across the board. And a lot of starter sets now are fifty to sixty dollars, uh, depending on which ones you get. A lot of, especially some independent five uh, E starter sets. Uh, I definitely think it is because for forty two dollars, you get uh, probably three to four sessions out of this and you could even run any sort of mini thistle hold campaign this gives you everything you need to do a campaign we'll get into is this is it worth that for somebody who already has simbrum core books i, I don't I, know that, that so, might be the question okay yeah. all right so so let's talk about the starter set because again if anyone is listening who maybe isn't familiar with starter sets for the most part, they are a pared down version. They're usually nicely presented and nicely packaged like this one is. But as far as what, what you get, you're not getting all of the rules. Usually you're getting selections of rules. And there's probably, like if magic is a thing, you're not going to get every spell. You're probably going to get just the spells that the characters and the character sheets have and maybe the monsters have against you. Uh, so before we dive into this, let's just a big picture overview what mm -hmm. are your thoughts on the Simbarum rules? Like, do you think it's a fun rule set? Okay. So it's interesting because about, I would say about two years ago, when I first started getting into Simbarum, I absolutely loved it. And I do really like it still, but it is a D20. It's a D20 roll under rule set. And recently I've gotten into dice pool games. Mm -hmm. All right. So those are the kind of games that I'm really digging right now is dice pool stuff. So, but that said, if I'm going to play a D20 game, I really do like the roll under because it's, it's very much player focused as a GM. I don't necessarily need to track a whole lot of, I don't need to track like, DCs or how difficult something is all players have a static they know that they need to roll under a certain thing to uh, be successful and it's always the same if they're trying to move something or jump over something they have a static score they roll their d20 and as long as they beat that then they are successful 
So I do like the fact I'm definitely a big fan recently of games that simplify things for the dungeon master. So yeah, D20 roll under. I, I, I like that. I, what about I, yourself? I like it as well. Uh, you know, I am a, a D and D person. That's the first game I ever played. It's still one of, if not my favorite RPG of all time. The fifth edition, I think is the best version of D and D I've ever played, but I also love tons of games and the more and more games I get to play, I'm liking them as much, if not more than I thought I would and just really get into them. So I, for me, I would put Simbarum very much in the D and D esque yes. column. Uh, it's yeah. like a dark, grim version of D and D as far as the setting goes, but mechanic wise, it's very, it's in the same wheelhouse as D and D, and I don't mind that. It's, it's got a few little tweaks and changes to it to make it feel a little bit more grim and dark because you have uh, you know extra things that you want it's not just one role usually there's like multiple roles or Mm -hmm. things that happen but i do really like the role under and i know i've said that many times before when we reviewed this game davikar and the world of sambarum is a world where you're constantly in danger and i I mean that's baked into the setting you are constantly in danger and there's something thematic about wanting to roll low that makes me feel like I'm trying to survive but not be noticed by the larger world. And rolling high in that system would have just not worked for me. And I may be reading way too much and giving them too much credit. I don't know. But I do really, really like that system. So as a and d esque game, I think it works very well. I think it's fun and ties in thematically. So I am, in general, I think it's a little bit too gritty for me, too mm-hmm. complex at this point. But I do like it. So it's, it's like definitely- high, high. It's definitely gritty yes. for sure. And I like my gritty games. So right. yeah, the, the, all, the one other thing about the Simbarm rules, it is what they call it is a classless system. So it's basically, they have archetypes, which are uh, the, you can make your own archetype, but an archetype is just a suggestion of different abilities that you want to take. So if you want to be a, they have a, like, for example, in the starter set rules, there's a knight. So if you want to play a character who feels like a knight, you take these different abilities and, but anybody has access to all the abilities at one choice. Archetypes are really just kind of suggestions. Okay. So like classless that. system. Yeah. Okay. So it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's cool. It's like the old, like uh, game guide books for RPGs. Like if you ever had like any of the, the Skyrim or the elder scrolls uh, gamer guide books, it would say like, Oh, you want to play a battle wizard. Here's the tree that you want to go into. Right. And that's kind of what this does. Gotcha. So. Okay. So again, we're not getting the full rules though. So do you want to talk about what's yeah. included or like what yeah. was left out? Like what's the best way to approach that? Yeah. So what we'll do is, so the starter set, the first book is this, you get the starter rules and what you get is you first get a little bit of information about Davakar as a whole. Uh, you get a little, it's not much. It's about 15 pages of here is the world. And this is for the players to read. It introduces them to the tone and setting up the game. And then you get the player characters, all right? It goes right into, this is how you create a character. And there are pre-gen characters that, are, that use the rules that are given here. So the rules have been cut back a good amount, so, which is fine for a starter set. But like I was saying, archetypes. So there is the standard archetypes. So you have your warrior archetype, your hunter, mystic, so on. But within each of those different archetypes, there's these different paths you can take. So for example, I said uh, knight. This is one of the occupations. So in the regular rules, it includes a lot of different occupations. So you don't get all of them. It's like you're not getting your you're not getting your duelist or your your more berserker. You're just getting knights. Uh, mm-hmm. Same thing for like hunters you're not getting your you're not getting your thieves or your rogues or oh you get rogues that's a different thing but you're for a wizard you're only getting two types of wizards you're not getting all four or five all right so it's definitely paired back then you get some abilities and this is kind of what i was saying uh before there's in the starter set you get 40 abilities these are the cool things that you can do so are you a man at arms or do you have iron fists where you can punch people really hard or do you use a certain type of bow and arrow so these are these different things that you can do in the regular book you get 40 and in here you get i think it's like 19 so it's roughly half Half. yeah so it's 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 still a good amount and then it jumps into your different uh your different races all right 
you actually get most of the races here. So you're getting your, you're getting your human goblin and your ogre. I think the only one that you don't get from the core book is the changeling. Hmm. So these are your, these are your core. They don't include like the different uh, types. Like in the core book, you can be an Ambrian hmm. or a barbarian or these different types. Uh, here you just get, you get human and you get Ambrian. Gotcha. So you're not getting a whole lot of different types. Uh, the And then also just for reference, they do include elves in later releases. So the advanced player's guide for Simbarm, you can be play elves. So, and those are definitely not included here because those aren't even in the core book. Right. Uh, from there, you get some mystical powers, uh, which is your magic system. And this is pared down probably the most. You don't get really any real magic stuff. And then it goes into combat rules. And for the most part, all the combat rules are here, except there's no special actions, okay. which are really cool things, which I think really makes them some of them cool. It's stuff like blind fighting, shield, line of sight. They basically, if you read the core book, those are core to the combat rules and they just don't include them here at all. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's almost like they're trying to simplify combat for the starter rules. Right. Uh, and then you get some, obviously some information on, uh, equipment and whatnot. But the last part of this is probably my favorite. Uh, at the end of the starter set rules, there's a section about the pre-made characters. So it's their backstory and some story stuff. So there's a whole section oh. with some art in here. So you don't just get a, you just don't get a, a pre-made character. It's actually included in the book. Like here are the pre-made characters. So you get Indra, the Thearch, all right, the, you get friend, the wizard. All right, so these different, and you get information about them. These cool, really cool story things. I loved that. And that's kind of the starter rules. So definitely it's pared down a ton. So you're not getting, there's no new rules here. I will say that. Okay. So there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing new. This right. is to get people jumped into the system. Right, and that's what a starter set is. It's an on-ramp into a game. It's It's a... A, we'll say a lower cost investment, even though this one's 42 bucks, which isn't nothing, but you know, you're getting enough to play probably several sessions. And if you enjoy it, then, then you start buying like the additional products. That That's the whole point is, it's basically please buy more of our stuff here. Here's enough to whet your appetite type of a thing. So that's, yeah. so that's the starter rules books, but we got another book we got to talk about. So what is in the other book then for the game so, master? Yeah. So the setting and adventures, this is the this is for the game master. All right, this doesn't include any information, any extra information about uh, Ambria or the world as a whole. This focuses on Thistlehold. Thistlehold is the the border settlement that separates Ambria from Davakar. Uh, you've got basically civilization from the wild, and Thistlehold is the gate. So uh, the key thing about this world of Simbarum is that. The, the rules in the setting want the adventurers to dive into the forest, to go explore. And Thistlehold is kind of like that. It's that key place that kind of holds everything together. So you get a lot of information about Thistlehold. And I like this a lot. It basically, I feel like I could run a little mini Thistlehold campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Thistlehold is very, it's very dark, very gritty. Kind of reminds me of some like, like, 14th century London in the sense that it's very it's very it's very dirty uh it's a lot of there's def there's huge wealth disparity between people uh and there's lots of people going out and doing things outside of the city so you get a lot of information here All right this will hold is it the kind of place that you want to visit it's the kind of place that is at least offering a little bit of protection but you you don't want to settle in Thistlehold, like not as a character. As you know, this isn't no. where you're just going to set up. You you will be forced almost to go to Davakar, hoping to find your fortune and glory because Thistlehold is kind of a crap hole in itself. You know. Yeah, it for sure. And this is Thistlehold's where you get all of your quests, and so they include a lot of information here as far as like inns and taverns and places you can go to get quests and places you can go to sell loot mm -hmm. uh and they also include like hey here's the important npcs so if you want to take the if you want to go a little bit further past the two um, pre-made adventures you can totally do that with the information that they provide so i will say that all right very cool what else so, 
Yeah, so the next section you get is expeditions in Davakar. So this is once you're out of Thistlehold, you go into the forest. So they include some information about what it's like to explore in the in the forest. They include some some random items, some random treasure tables. I love random tables. I think like I've I, there was an RBG that was just random tables and rollable loot tables. I would I love it so much. It's just so much fun. The randomness, like yeah. you roll, uh, you could get a oh, you know, you get a chest of gold, or now you have a unicorn. Just like this whole, just like it's just so random. I love that. So you get some information about that, and then you get some monsters and adversaries. So they include. Uh, so this isn't just things that are you've got your pre-made adventures, but then they also include a bunch of different monsters. So if you want to throw them into your game as they're exploring through Davakar, you can do that. And then we get into uh, the adventures. So there's two adventures. And the first one is Where Darkness Dwells. And the next one is The Gathering Storm. So if you have already played all the Simbarum stuff, you know the rules right here. These two adventures are the new content. So okay. these are, if you if you are a Simbarum completionist and you want everything, these are two new adventures that are have, are brand new to this uh, uh this set this this starter set. Okay, uh, the first one is very easy, right? And it's easy on purpose. It's meant to really introduce your characters to the world, and you don't want to kill them or give them things that are too difficult. You know, otherwise they're not going to come back. And the next one is very much a more difficult uh, adventure. So you've got lots of puzzles, more difficult monsters, more, more deadly NPC interactions. So the first one, though, is where darkness where darkness dwells. The basic structure is, uh, like most things in Davakar, there was this, uh, this city that was thousands of years ago. And then the ancient city uh, buried itself to avoid conquest by the the people who used to live in Davakar or the Simbarum Empire. All right, this is this this whole like ancient thread. That's why it's called Simbarum. There was this ancient empire called Simbarum. All right, nobody knows who they were. It's very mysterious. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, this city was going to be conquered by Simbarum, so they buried their city. They basically collapsed it, and everybody died. It's a terrible place. All right, so take uh, my ball, go home. I know that's literally what they did, and so basically, the ancient city has recently been discovered. All right, and all of these adventurers are leaving Thistlehold to go find it and get the relics. But unfortunately, nobody is coming back. Nobody is coming back from Thistlehold. Or nobody's coming back from this, this ruined site. And so you are like, okay. Somebody's like, do you want to go to these ruins? Why, nobody, has come, nobody has come back. And then you're like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Of course, I'm going to go. And so you find out why people aren't coming back and you need to... Is it because it's the happiest place on earth and it's like Disneyland and then once you get there, you don't ever want to leave? Yeah, I mean, if dying there means that you never want to leave, okay. like that's that's what happens. Yeah, I so assumed it was some very happy and, you know, positive feel reason. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, like just like everything in Davakar, so yeah. happy and positive. So that's kind of, that's the that's the beginning adventure. And they don't, this adventure doesn't necessarily tie in with the second one at all okay. uh, you can though so they say that if you have a more advanced per party and you can swap these adventures around but you get the next one which is uh the gathering storm uh this is a another ruin that has been discovered this time it's an ancient witch's tower all right and this is a little bit different whereas it has just now been discovered and now there's competing bands of adventuring parties going out to find it and to, to loot it before the anybody else. So you basically are one of these adventure parties and there's like two or three others that are going out there. So this is really cool. It's like a race. It's whoever can get there first gets the loot. And so you're you're dealing with not just the, the monsters in Davakar, but you're dealing with these other adventuring parties. And sometimes the people in Davakar and Ambria are just as deadly as the monsters. Oh, I'm sure. So you, yeah, so you get more of like this more cool NPC interactions. Uh, but you can find you find out about this witch's tower either through Thistlehold, uh, just like somebody having a rumor or somebody hiring them. It's like, hey, we you will I'm going to pay your way for you to go out and discover almost like a benefactor. Mm -hmm. And when you come back, I get a majority of the loot and you get something. Or this is the only way that it ties into the previous adventure. In the previous adventure, you could find a journal which actually mentions this witch's tower. 
Uh, and anyway, as you head out, uh, there's uh, crazy monsters that are in the tower and these crazy experiments and whatnot. And so that's what uh, that's what the Gathering Storm is. And you get it, like I said, you have the front and back adventure map. Uh, so one of the 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 weird dark map is for the first one, and then the tower is obviously this witch's tower. Gotcha. Uh, and that's kind of that's kind of it. Uh, uh, that that's kind of it for the adventure. So you get basically an easy adventure and a hard adventure. The adventures try to get you to do different things. Uh, with the system, obviously, and with the setting itself, uh, right. and that's it. So you're, a, you know, an experienced game master at this point, I would say. Uh, assuming you have, we'll even just your players. If you were to play this with your players, like, is are these a one session game, or do you think some of these, like, how many, how much play time are you getting from this setting or from this box set? I should I should say. So. I would say if you were to run the adventures very much where you don't use this a hold, you're just like, oh, like it. Cause it doesn't tell you like what, how to use this a hold okay. with these adventures. It's just like, oh, they get a mission from this hold, which is kind of weird since they included all this. You can ignore this a hold completely and just start them out on their quest. And you could do each one of these adventures in one session. Okay. All right. So each one is going to require at least one session. That said, though, because of the information in this will hold, uh, and some of the other tie-ins that they have in the adventures, I would say that you have easily uh, two sessions in each of these adventures. Okay, all yeah, right. That's what that's that's what that's what I would say. But you could run these in one session and not miss anything. If you decide to run it longer, you're all you're doing is adding additional content from the beginning of the uh, this of the thistle old stuff. Right. So if you just wanted to engage with the rules to try to figure out how this game works, you've got two different adventures you could play in two sessions, like maybe six hours total, three and three or something like that. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to actually run more of like a mini campaign, then you have stuff that would let you expand that a little bit and then, you know, lengthen it somewhat. Yeah, I could definitely see myself getting five sessions out of this. Okay. That's where, that's what I see. Uh, the, I would probably, I would do three to five when I go to run my uh, campaign. Uh, yeah, that's kind of, uh, that's that's kind okay. of, that's kind of it for all right, so I will say this, I will say this, the other thing I wanted to say is if you were to pick all this stuff out of the box, uh, if I didn't know anything about Symbarum, I would feel comfortable the way that they present the material spending two hours, that's it, I think, on both books. And I feel like I would be comfortable enough to run a mini campaign so that's what i'm it's very this is very much a good very consolidated rules set where i could pick it up spend two hours with the system and that's my prep and i would be ready to go nice so don't think of it as like i know a lot of times people are like oh well i don't have time for another campaign and a lot of times we are all crunch for time oh, so yeah. i so yeah i definitely want to point out that like yeah two hours with this and you are good to go all right so basically at this point, kind of final thoughts. I mean, you've been very detailed, but is there anything you didn't, like there wasn't a place for a comment you wanted to have, or do you want to try to wrap everything into a bow for us here? What, what are your final thoughts before we I get to our ratings yeah, on yeah, this my, product? Yeah, I really like this. And as somebody who likes Symbarum, I definitely like having this box on my shelf. That said though, if if you want a dark, if you want a dark gritty setting and you want a new game, this is definitely buy the starter set. Okay, it's very it's very good. If you've played Simbrum before, if you and you're not a completionist, I don't know if this is for you because there's nothing there's really nothing that new here. You're not getting anything other than a box and some dice, a couple maps, uh, and two adventures. And it, so, but the majority ninety percent of this you've seen before. Mm -hmm. So just be be if you're going to buy this uh, and you've already done Simbrum, just just note. So if you like Simbarum, by all means, buy it, but you're not getting anything new. So if you want to try out Simbarum, this might be a good avenue. Yes. If you already know how to play Simbarum, there's not a lot here. Yeah. But if you already play Simbarum and you want to support Free League, then maybe you yeah. buy it just to have it on your shelf and to support the, the store and the company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we're, we're very much pro Free League here. I think yep. they make, in general, 
very good products. So we like them quite a lot. Yes. Uh, but we are still going to rate them as hard as we would rate anybody and mm-hmm. anything else. So we have a bit of a Rubicon that we use when we break down our ratings so that we look at a couple different areas and we give an overall. So the first thing I want to talk about is art and layout. I'm going to okay. guess that a lot of this is recycled from the core books. Is there any new art anywhere? So I tried finding it and this is my one, probably my one big sticky thing. There is no new art. Uh, so I completely agree and understand that if there's no new art, that's a you know that's a bit of a setback. But assuming this was your first experience with Simvarum because this was the starter set, try to grade it that way. I think would be more fair. Yeah. So with that with that said, then if you were to, I love the I love the art in general. Uh, this is done by Martin Grip, who is also doing the stuff for the the massive One Ring Kickstarter. So if you like Simvarum art, that's the same stuff. So when I when we did our original. Uh, review of Simbrum, I gave the art an A plus. Mm-hmm. And if I were to, and that's the same thing here, if we're sticking with the same stuff, uh, I love this art. It's very much like this watercolor, kind of very, not a whole lot of detail. Yeah. It's very dark. It's kind of blur, almost blurry, like Vaseline on the lens sort of stuff, but it works really well for this setting, I feel. So yeah, if that's the case, then A plus. All right. Anything on layout you want to talk positives or just, is it sufficient? I love the, I love the, it's the same layout as Simbrum and I love it a lot. I they, the information is presented really well and they integrate the art really well. And then they have the really cool sidebars that just, I, I love the layout here. Okay. So it's, it's, it's just, it's good. All so, right. so the next it just, thing- it's not, it's not, the, it's not like standard. So in the sense that with that, you pick open a, a 5e book or any other kind of uh, standard RPG book, they follow this same guidelines uh, here. It follows a structure, but then there's also these just random bits of sidebar text scattered throughout, and I, it's so good. So. And I'll mention that you do some layout yourself, so yeah. like you have kind of a passion and knowledge for layout that maybe the layman like myself doesn't appreciate, which is one of the yes. reasons why we do talk about layout, because you have yeah, it's, an eye for it's it. good layout, good. It, especially because of like half of, like 90% of good layout for me is how you present the information and that it flows. And like I said, you could pick this up and learn it in two hours, and a lot of that has to do with how they present the information. Good. All right, so then we'll talk about crunch, the actual rules, uh, how the setting system works. What do you think okay. about that? So yeah, so I definitely this is a this is an a minus for me. It's a it's a d twenty system. So I think like way back in the day, I gave it an a plus. But as I've started to play more games, I've started to go away from the d twenty itself. But this is be, but because it's a little bit different than a normal d twenty, uh, definitely. A minus for me. I like the rules. I like classless systems. I like having access to every ability and not just uh, certain ones. I like to be able to make my character how I want to make them. All right. Okay. Uh, so then we talk about the fluff. And again, we've, yes. we're very high on the fluff in our other Simbarum reviews, but trying to pare down just what you get, the tastes that you get from the starter set, where does this fall for you? Okay. So I said this in our big review that my favorite part of the big, uh, the main core book was Thistlehold. And I love Davakar because I love edgy, dark settings. And there's, it's just, this just speaks to me. I love it so much. I love the fluff in here. And the, what they include, what they chose to include for Thistlehold was great. And I said this on my Twitter breakdown, like they include the, the food that is included in here, it feels so real. Like it, it's just, it's nothing weird or anything. It's like oats and sausage and berries and whatnot. Uh, it's just, so uh, fluff for me, this is definitely getting, this is getting an A. So right. I love the fluff here. What they include is uh, great. They chose, I'm glad they went with Thistlehold and not one of the Ambrian cities or the uh, barbarian cities this will hold is where it's at gotcha so we got a plus for art and layout an a minus for crunch and a solid a for fluff so i can only assume you're giving it a b for overall rating uh yeah of course uh no overall rating is we're gonna we're gonna split it right down the middle and we're gonna give it an a, an a. Okay. okay an a obviously i love simbarum and as starter sets go, this is a good starter set because if the audience for a starter set is somebody who hasn't played the game before, and if you're looking at it from that perspective, this is a must buy. Uh, Simbrum's a very good, uh, the rules really allowed the world to really 
live. And that's what, when, to me, that's a good RPG when the rules really elevate the setting and allow you to get a feel for what the setting really is. And that, that's, that's to me is good. So I like, I like Simram and what is included here is great because it's quick to learn. Uh, they got, they got maps, they got dice. So they, it's got everything that you want from a starter set. Yep. Awesome. And again, we are fans of Free League Press in general, so certainly that would be, you know, we want to support them. Uh, there will be a link in our show notes to go to the Free League store to purchase a copy of this. We are not an affiliate. We do not get any uh, cut or take or percentage. This is just for convenience sake. If you want to go to the Free League store, I'll put a link in the show notes for you. All yes. right. So any final thoughts before we wrap up? Uh, no, I think, think I think I got it all out of my system. All right. Fantastic. So with that, so Tom, again, where can people find you if they want to interact with you on the internet? Uh, that would be Bezcar Tom, Mandalorian Metal Tom on Twitter. Uh, find me there. I'll be, I like to do, uh, I did an unboxing for this here where I took a bunch of pictures, posted it there, uh, talk about comics and RPGs and whatnot. Excellent. Uh, again, my name is Michael at the RPG Academy. Everything I do can be found there, both website, Facebook, uh, most active on Twitter. And check out our Discord. Uh, you, It's it's an open and community so anyone can join but you do have to ask we don't post the links anywhere but uh we're starting we're, we're still seeing a little bit of growth more and more people coming in but we have our faithful few that are there we talk about wandavision comic books tv <laughs> movies uh we we organize some games we talk about role-playing game stuff there so it's a really fun place to be if you if you are listening to the show and you're still listening at this point you're probably someone who should be on our Discord. Yes. Uh, Tom, thank you so much for taking the time to deep dive into this product to do the review yeah, no for problem. us. Once again, thank you to Free League for providing a free copy for our review purposes. Uh, if there's a product that you, the listener, would like to see us review, whether it's your product or not, send us an email, let us know. We will do our best to get a copy and add it to our list. Uh, if it is your product and you would like us to review it, then you know you can send us a copy. Uh, we don't guarantee that we will do reviews because we do live by that motto. If there's something we get a review copy for and we just don't like it, we just don't review it. We're not going to tell anybody we don't like it. It's just as if it had never happened. Uh, but you can email me, the RP, you can email me, the RPG Academy at gmail.com. And with that, we will say thank you and goodbye.